it's like 11, a little boy. He said they killed 24 people. We were in the police station the whole day that day, talking to the DCO to release the body of one of the boys they killed, Lekon. When they now let us into the mortuary, in fact, we had to blow some of the pictures. They showed us the finger they had cut off, the whole body lying there. Well, it just shows that there are opportunities for ministry, and that's what our God Bless Nigeria ministry is doing. Well, I'd like to invite Pastor Busola Jagede. All the people who have spoken, all the people who have spoken today, now please sit down here for a while, who have spoken today have been pastors in churches. Please sit down. There have been pastors in churches or pastors' wives who are pastoring churches. But for our last session, we have kept the ministry of this woman. Her ministry is called Daughters, Daughters of Zion, Daughters of Destiny International. And uh, I know the grace she carries to minister to women, but beyond women, I think her grace ministers also to leadership. When she cares a lot about women, but beyond that ministry to women, there's something she has for ministers. And I believe God has a word for us from her. So let us receive Pastor Busola Jagede to the podium. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up on our feet? I know it's been a long day. Thank you so much, P.T. P.T. is my father. I saw P.T. for the first time in the year uh, 1994. When it was the first year of my marriage at Jimo Odutola. My husband and I went to the church. And incidentally, a year later, we relocated to Wari. And I was telling him one message he preached that resonated with me was about building your prayer altar. But this, we're all gathered here as an attestation to the grace upon my father. The grace of building people. The greatest thing you can do is to build people that you're building you don't even know. And so, at this time, I want us to lift up our voices to God. This is the last session. So much has been said. Pity, thank you so much for being the same over the years. Let's just take this song. It says, take me into the holy of holies. Is the choir still here? Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take your coal. Touch my lips. Here I am. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take your call, touch my lips, here I am, Lord, take your call, touch my lips, here I am, that should be your heart cry, sing it, take me in to the holy, of holy, take me in by the blood, take me Father, like 
Isaiah. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. His strength filled the temple, but then I began to see myself, the inadequacies in me. And he said, behold God, I am a man of unclean lips. Lord, we stand here as your servants. And as we see your glory, yet we see a reflection of our limitations. Just like you did. For Isaiah, you sent your angel, the seraphim, who took the coal and cleansed the lips. At this evolution conference, we will not leave until you cleanse us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, like you did, oh God, in Zechariah chapter number 3, Joshua the high priest, he stood before the angel of the Lord to perform his assignment. Yet the devil stood to accuse him. Again, again, you sent help. You said, take off the filthy garments. Is this not the branch? Is this not Pastor John that I called? Is this not Pastor Tony that I called? You accuser, I rebuke you. Take the filthy garments away. Today we stand, every filthy garments limiting our churches, limiting our ministries, we will not leave till you take them away. I said we will leave here till you take them, oh God. Lift up your voice. Take your gold, touch my lips. Take your gold, cleanse my lips. Touch my lips. Here I am. Take your gold, touch my lips. Take your gold, touch my lips. Here I am. Father, we thank you because we know you are a merciful God. You sent help to Isaiah. You sent help to Joshua the high priest. We are here as your servants, your priests. And we know even by this conference alone, it is your divine help. You will help us. We will not fail in this assignment. In the name of Jesus. Right now we come against every spirit of ministerial frustration. When Elijah was frustrated, he told God, I can't do it. And God said, if you can't do it, go and anoint Elisha. Are you tired? Are you frustrated? Is ministry a struggle? Right now, Father Lord, we ask for your grace. We ask for your strength. We ask for your encouragement. In the name of Jesus. Father, we stand. The word of God says when Jesus, when he was, he, he went to the boat, the temple wind had carried the boat away and the ship had driven afar and Jesus walked on the water many ministries the sheep are, the ships are being carried by contrary winds today even at this conference we decree and declare that let every contrary wind be still in the name of Jesus Jesus told Peter Peter, come. Peter said, should I come? He said, come. Lo, many of us have stepped up like Peter. We've stepped out on that ministerial water walking. We have stepped out. Alas, some are sinking. You may be called, but yet you may be sinking. Today we ask, oh God, rescue us in the name of Jesus. Rescue our churches. Rescue our ministries. Rescue our families. To you be all the glory. Thank you, our God. You who called us, Yoruba people call you Oromon Shefayati. When you send, you empower. When you send, you help. And so we will not be afraid. To you be all glory. Give him praise in the house this evening. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Amen. Again, I want to thank my daddy, Pastor Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate all other great men and women of God who are here seated. Those who have spoken before me. The good Lord bless you all. It is a great honor when your father calls you to speak and is sitting. 
So you can imagine, Pastor Tony asked me, I hope you are not under pressure. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is in control. Amen. We want to thank God for all that has been said during this conference. I'll just share briefly something that happened to me. I'm married to a man from Makiti. And in our family, we have a strong patriarch figure. My father-in-law is a strong man, still alive, over 80. But when I married my husband, or when we got married, he had to take me to the village to introduce me because his father had retired. His mother had retired from service. And they, they are the typical Yoruba family that retired to the village. And so when I met my husband and we were going to get married, he took me to a kitty to introduce to his parents. And they received me, my mother-in-law, warm woman, nice woman, still is. But my father-in-law is a very wonderful man, but a strong patriarch. And that has shaped the life of my husband. He loves his father. They have a strong bond. And so the first 10 to 15 years of our marriage, something used to happen every New Year or Christmas. From Lagos, we moved to Wari. Every festive season, we would go to Ekiti to be with the, you know, you know the way it is. We would travel. And then spiritually, as I began to grow in the Lord, maybe in the church, there's going to be a glorious service on Christmas Day or New Year. Here would I be in Ekiti. Nothing. Just one old Anglican church. And I used to detest that. And you know, as a woman under authority, it was a good thing being with the, you know, mommy's, mommy usually will say, Moti Doloni. That is, I am now somebody who has people. Because all her children will come. And you know the way it is in the village. But I've always been a Lagos girl. I was born and bred in Lagos. My parents lived and died in Lagos. Here was I married to an Ekiti man. And religiously, my husband would drive. He doesn't talk much. But his, his silence is very loud. He would drive us to Ekiti. From Lagos, from Wari, every festive season. And so in my spiritual life, I began to wonder, Lord, I want to enjoy the Christmas service in my church. You can imagine we're going to a cold hotel, you know. And then he would drive us to Ekiti. And what usually happened was that crossover. I'll just sleep. I'm not going to one Anglican church that there, you know. What they are saying, I'll be sleeping all the time. Then the Holy Spirit woke me one day and told me, you see that your church in Lagos that you love, and this Anglican church, this village church, they've got the same assignment. They've got the same assignment. The church in Ekiti may not be big, but the pastor there has exactly the same assignment as the one that pastors a 50,000 church. So don't detest my house. You go there and worship me. It is very easy for us when we hear a lot of success stories, we can't identify with it. How many people are here? Be true to yourself so that we can bring a balance from the word of God. And what is the balance we're bringing from the word of God so that you will not live here and think, oh, it can only happen to Pastor Paul. Like you thank God for peace. There are so many peace in this congregation. Will it ever happen for peace's father's church to record 12,000? Honestly, seriously. Do you think it will ever happen? It may, but it may not. So where do we go from here as ministers? John the Revelator in the book of Revelations, he was caught up in the island of Patmos. And when he was in the island of Patmos, he got the letter to seven churches. The very first letter he got was to the church in Ephesus. Now, basically, the letters had commendations for the different churches. If they're doing well, they were commended. But 
The major thing was to show the deficiencies, the problems, the hindrances in the churches, as well as to prefer solutions so that they can be better. And that's what I'm talking about. That's my topic. How to remove barriers. Now, the first church was the church in Ephesus. The problem with that church was that it was a backsliding church. The Bible says that the church had, had fallen and the solution that was preferred, preferred was repentance. After that church in Ephesus, the second church, and this ministered to me, was the church in Smyrna, S-M-Y-R-N-A. That particular church had three problems. There was a problem of poverty. There was a problem of persecution. And there was a problem of blasphemy. Now, there were some people that the Bible recognized to be those who belong to the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says there were those people who called themselves Jews, but they were not. I'm talking about Revelations chapter number 2 right now. Now, that particular church was a poor church. They didn't have money. But the Bible says, the word of God says, do you think you are poor? But you are not poor. You are rich. Check your Bible. Is it there or not? So if you are here and you don't have 5,000 members, you are not poor. If you are doing the right thing, and I'm going to get to it in a minute. Because it is possible for you to leave a conference like this and not harness what God has for you. Every one of us, God has a word for us. Which we must take away. Do we get it? So that particular church in Smyrna had the problem of persecution and the solution was boldness. In fact, the Bible says some of them will be martyred. So the people in Southern Kaduna, there's nothing we can do about it. Boko Haram has, has killed people and will still kill people. That is that particular church. That is their destiny. But in it all, they must hold on. They must be enduring. The third church is the church in, was the church in Paganum. The problem with the church in Paganum was idolatry, false doctrine, fornication. And the solution was repentance and obedience. I'm going somewhere. And from all these letters to the churches, we can identify the problems in the Nigerian church. The fourth church was the church in Tiatira. And the Bible records that the problem of that particular church was witchcraft, Jezebelic spirit. And you know the way it is in present-day Nigeria. We have turned witchcraft to a joke. Is it the witch in your mother's village? Before you do, if you don't know anything now, you say your mother, your, your stepmother is a witch. You know? The devil wants to get us to a position where we will trivialize important things so that we will not pay attention. Meanwhile, the Bible says we should not be unaware of the devices of the enemy. So that particular church in Tiatira allowed the Jezebelic spirit so much that there's, there was now moral decadence, there was sexual immorality, and what was the solution to the church in Tiatira? Three things. Repentance, consecration, and separation. Brethren, for some of the problems we have, we've got to go back to the old religion. The Bible hasn't changed. Methods can change. Generations can change. But I don't think we've received another word. Do you think so? Now, next to that church in Tiatira, the church in Sardis. Now, I'm not against you growing your church, okay? I'm bringing a balance to everything we have heard. So that people will not leave here and think it can't happen for them. The church in Sardis had the problem of spiritual death. This particular church had a lot of church activities. The Bible says you think you are alive, but you are dead. Anniversary church. Activities, programs, programs, programs. But the Bible says, ah, you think you are alive, but you are dead. You, are, you look good on the outside, but inside you are nothing. The solution was revival. Revival. The fifth church, or is it the sixth? The sixth church, the only church that got the past mark was the church in Philadelphia. They endured, they held on to the word, faithful, unwavering faith. What were they advised to do? Hold on, oh, 
Even though you, look, you are faithful now, hold on so that you will not lose your crown. The last church was the church in Laodicea. This was a rich and complacent church. Some churches, they don't need to hound people for money. They just need a few people. Everything will be done. We thank God for that, but there must never be a time when the riches will take the place of God in our lives. We've seen the work that Pastor Tony has been doing over the years. Don't you know that that's real church? When one life is saved. When one life is restored one at a time. So this church in Laodicea was rich, but a lukewarm church. And Jesus was the one that appeared to John the Revelator. It was Jesus. And Jesus said, if you are neither hot or cold, I'm going to do what? May we not be spilled out of God's mouth. Today, we are in this evolution conference. We've been separated here for the past few hours. This is our island of Patmos. We must not live here without doing at least three things in Revelation 1, chapter number 9. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Three things. Whatever we have learned here, we must write. Everything you have heard, you must write it down. From this conference, you have seen some things. You have heard people, you have seen some things. Write them down. Number three, we must apply. Pastor Tony shared the scripture earlier on. We must be transformed by the renewing of our minds to prove the three things. What is good, acceptable, and perfect. Some of us, we are doing some good things, but they are not acceptable. We are doing some good and acceptable things, but we haven't perfected them. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, quickly, church growth. From the story of a kitty that I told you. Do you ever think that church will have 5,000 members in a logo kitty? Hello? It probably will never. But church growth is about two major things. And we must never miss these foundations. The first thing is about purpose. Any church that grows without fulfilling divine purpose is gathering firewood for hell. Excuse me. Stay there all across Europe are filled with people without the divine purpose. Right or wrong? Excuse me. Blockbuster movies fill cinema houses with people without divine purpose, right or wrong. It is good to have numbers and we will grow when we are doing this right. What are the three purposes? Every one of us, we must write these things down. The only profession, one of the professions the angels will have in heaven is that of an accountant. By training, I'm a chartered accountant and we do what is called audit. And the Lord is going to ask us. The first thing is that the church is to represent heaven in the locality. What Pastor Tony is doing in Alamutu is representing heaven in Idioro. He's representing heaven in uh, which other place we went to pick uh, this, that wonderful girl. Banana, one island like that. Exactly. It's not banana, sorry. What do you... Tinkan! You know that lady that her life was transformed. What you just did was to represent heaven to her. So every church, we are to represent heaven in our locality. What's the, sec the purpose is threefold. What's the second purpose? The second purpose is that we must shine as light and model true living in the church. By You know, the church is not made up of the walls. The church is not made up of the building. The people in our churches must be brought up to be light and to model true living. So it is a slap on our face when they steal money and they bring their tithe and we collect. We are not doing church. The third purpose, the purpose is threefold. To display and demonstrate kingdom power. That's what Mama Grace was talking about. And do you know the problem with us? We are too comfortable. Nobody wants to dig their well of anointing. Anointing takes time to dig, but we cannot manifest it. I never knew that even choir member can cast out demons until we went to a place called Awoyaya to do a crusade. We didn't know so many people would come. And when the power of God came, see people manifesting. 
How many will I, bring, will I minister to? I said, everybody, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands. And we began to see things happen. You don't know you carry power because you are sitting in the church and you are not going out there. If you step out, you are going, you will be shocked at the power you carry that you are holding on to yourself. The people who have the power, who have the anointing, nobody brought it from heaven. We all prayed for it. Are we ready to pay the price of anointing? What do we see now? You see an anointed man of God and you see somebody, I want to tap. Excuse me, you can't tap. I went to preach in Chicago and the, the Holy Spirit came down mightily in the church. I was even afraid. The whole choir, everybody on the... Then after, the, the pastor's wife grabbed me. Shoo, choo, 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 cracking my ribs. She wanted anointing. You don't know for how long I've been in Nigeria fasting and praying. Many of us, we have thrown away these old time things. There is no other way. There is no shortcut. The people who are looking for the shortcuts are the charlatans. They are the ones that bury things. And because we in the church, we are too lazy to dig our well of anointing. So the people will go to them. If you like, tell them don't go. They will look at you and they will go. You see, for somebody like me that runs a ministry, not a church, we see a lot of things you don't see in the church. Tell them not to go anywhere in your church. They will say, thank you, pastor. They are calling you on their phone. They have prophet one, prophet two, prophet three, prophet four. Baba Ori Okesis. And they will all come to church and look good and pretend to you, the pastor. You will be shocked. You will be shocked where you will see some of your people. And so, any church that is not fulfilling this threefold purpose, the people you are gathering, pray for them very well. Tell your neighbor, may I not gather firewood for hell? In the name of Jesus. Now, the second thing we need, the second foundation that we must all take away from here is that once you are fulfilling purpose, the church is not just about numbers. It is about health. The church must be healthy, not just large. And what are the vital signs? What are the vital signs? Please, you need to note it. The church. There are many vital signs. What's the state of our worship? Pastor Polaji talked about that. The time has come and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Excuse me, in churches where the worship is vibrant, not only will they deliver well, but they begin to compose songs. Because Psalm 40 verse 3 says, I will give you a new song. You will see, it's so vibrant. It's not a matter of, yes, it is good to be excellent, but when the worship is strong, look at that. Passionate spirituality. Spirit-filled members, good administration and accountability, so many things. As leaders, we are to check the vital signs of our church. Are we winning souls and are they staying? Where there is vibrant evangelism, there will always be soul winning. There will be first-timers. A sign when you don't get first-timers, a sign when you don't get people to give their lives to Christ is because the evangelism is not vibrant. Mama Grace talked about that. So, what is the number of our first-timers? I think, I, let me just move on because uh, Pastor Bolaji dealt a lot with this. Discipleship, small groups. Do we have Bible study? You know, there was something, an experiment done recently, and we realized, it was shown, that people don't know scriptures. They don't know scriptures. How else will they know if they don't read and they have moved up in position in church? They have climbed the ladder in church. It's an embarrassment to us. You are sick. What is the scripture? My God shall supply my need according to... No, no, no. That's not the scripture. You want to travel. What is the scripture? Excuse me, our Sunday services should not just be celebration services alone. Pastor Bolaji said something profound. That your Sunday service is the most important. You may have Bible study programs you do later. But... They don't come. The same number that you see on Sunday. You don't see them during those Bible, do, right or wrong. So what do you do as a mother? When your child is hungry, is when you feed the child with balanced diet. How many people have, have children? You are winning. 
you know? When they are hungry, you mix everything together and make sure you give them. During Sunday services, maybe once a month, make sure there is Bible study. We have to go back to those old things. People don't know scriptures. They don't know the word. They don't know it. And how are they going to fight the devil when it comes against them? And so we are producing weak Christians. Yes, there can be many. But how can they withstand the devil? And that's why many of them are misled. God is going to ask them, what did you feed them with? Yes, they came and they gave. Yes, they came and they built the church and gave you a nice pedigree. But were you careful enough to check their lives? So, quickly, as I round up, what are the problems and the solutions? The major problem killing our churches are internal problems. For external problems, the word of God says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Internal problems. And the first one, secret sins in us, the leader. You know, this is a leader's meeting. We have to be honest with ourselves. God gave Pastor Tony this idea because in heaven, they thought about how to reach all of us to tell us some things. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of all lights, in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. It was not just an idea. This is a divine mandate. And so, we, we must not live here without taking that. Secret sins in our lives. What is the solution? Let each one of us check our lives. Secret sin in the people we lead. Two people in the choir have impregnated one another. What did you do as the pastor? You don't want to rock the boat. Leave them, leave them. The child you pamper and over pamper is going to self-destruct. There are some things we must not condone. It is important to preach love and everything, but we must never ever be deceived not to call sin, sin. There's no other way. A sin is a sin in our lives do you know how God checks us women? Me particular, I can talk about myself. If I'm going to preach, what, which food will your husband eat when he wakes up? You want to go and carry microphone? Before I came this morning, I had prepared. Sometimes I prepare breakfast and lunch. And I'm going to preach at seven. Because my husband, is, he loves his food. And the Bible says, submit to your own. So before you carry that microphone, I begin to breathe fire. Take care of you. Take care of your husband. So, Secret sin. Excuse me. The anointing attracts men and women alike. The anointing attracts. The people that follow us, it is not a spell. It's a divine attraction. Some of them cannot say no to us. Right or wrong? Some of them are so intimidated by our very presence that you will not know if you should just hit her and kiss her a bit. You will know. And she won't be able to do anything. Brethren, let us check ourselves. Even Jesus was smart enough to have his personal protocol to be 12 men. He did not take Mary and Salome up the mountain to pray. Even Jesus was wise enough to know that. You think you can handle it? You are a man first. You are manifest. And this is a situation whereby people can get into church in one year. They are working close to you. They will make their way. In the last three weeks, three major scandals. A pastor stepped down in Denver. You can Google it. His wife said he had been sleeping with a church member. In South Africa, in an airport, commando style, a Nigerian pastor was arrested for molesting girls. They had been investigating him. They rounded him up. You can Google it. In Port Harcourt, a pastor married for the third time elaborately. It's a slap on her face. It affects us collectively as pastors. You don't even want to tell anybody you're a pastor. When are we going to talk to each other? The solution, every one of us, we must determine to live a holy life. Many, many problems, misappropriation of funds. <laughs> many of us, you see, the truth can hurt us, but it will heal us. 
We want Olivia Hill, right? Low capacity leaders. Leaders that refuse to grow. You can build, I think somebody has spoken about that. You can't build a church on a gift. By the time your church rises to a certain number, you've got to put in structures. Next, I'd like to talk about faulty foundation. The way you started your church, sooner or later will catch up with you. If you started on a faulty foundation, membership stealing, crisis, lies, deception, you went to hire a hall because you have the money bags in the ministry backing you against your senior pastor. You know the way it works? For some time, it will look cool. All of a sudden, problem will start. Deception, is the, deception and rebellion, they are very terrible. I'm afraid of it for my people. Ahitophel, as gifted as he was, he was killed by rebellion. I don't want to lose my people. You know, some people, when you lose them, even though they are wrong, you grieve. I don't know if you know what I mean. Even though they did something wrong, but you grieve for them. Let us all watch the foundation of the churches we are building. Associate pastors that are here, be careful. You may be anointed. Don't let people deceive you. Wait for your time. Appointing wrong people in position. Because the person is giving money. The person is not discipled. You made him deacon. You gave him position. Meanwhile, the one who has been laboring with you, who doesn't have money? Who is supposed to be the one you appoint? Well, I bet this one doesn't get clapped. If I appoint this one, we'll bring him money from his friends or her friends. This can cause a problem. Let us follow the leading of God by the Holy Spirit. The next problem, imbalanced emphasis. Building your church on prophecies, miracles, and deliverance only. We shouldn't do that. A church with a strong grace in deliverance must balance it by discipleship, teaching the people the word. The next thing, money issues. Money can bring a barrier. Maybe we don't have adequate funds. This I have learned running a ministry that is not a church. I don't have men in our ministry, meaning we don't have big tithes. But we bought a land of 45 million. We did the foundation for 23. The building is going to cost us 98 million. And we have started the first stage, which is going to take it to the lintel. And we have a bill of 10 million. And in our coffers, we have 12 million. How did it happen? These are women. God will give you wisdom. And it will touch the heart of the people. When we were buying the land, I carried the problem on my head. And I was having serious health issues. Until one day, the Holy Spirit woke me. Don't kill yourself, oh. If you kill yourself, somebody else will take over. It is my project. One development company took over our land, cleared the land, and took it and put mobile police there. We went into the land and we began to pray in the Holy Ghost. We were praying one by one. They dropped their tools. And they told us, you people fence your land. I want to tell everybody here, if you are doing something that you're struggling financially, look at it very well. Maybe it's just your ambition. It may not be from God. The way you interpreted it may not be the way God wants you to do. Next, still on the money issues. What is your kingdom return on investment? Are you wasting money? Excuse me, that is God's money. Must you insist on traveling first class? Must you? Must you? When you know your church can't afford it. You heard the man of God. He said some people said we can't even afford to call you. It's not because of the man of God. It's because of what some of us have. Some standards that some of us have set. You say you cannot go somewhere if they don't give you this or that. We are servants of God. If you have three million. And you go to a community. You can organize a crusade. And win at least 500 people to Christ. I can tell you that. How do some of us waste God's money? The Lord will help us. Misappropriation of funds. Disloyal associates. Uh, disloyalty can be that associates going to Orioke to pray against their pastor. Associates in secret sin, fighting for position and authority in the church. Associates that do not use their gifts to edify, but to cause crisis. I think there was an associate that came here to ask a question. Very, I, I like him because he was being honest. And you come to a place like this to receive right counsel. 
Sir, if you're still here, if people are coming to you because of your gift, every time they come to you, refer them to your senior pastor. Don't start your own mini fellowship inside the church. God does not honor such things. He's the giver of the gift. Associates that backstab their pastor. What is the solution? Every one of us here who are leaders must know that the people we are leading, some of them are carrying some grace that is so great. Let us create expressions for them. Look at what Pastor Tony has done. There's God Bless Nigeria. There is Mount Zion. There is Holy Trinity. Please, let us create departments. In the year 2015, due to the radical discipleship program in Daughters of Destiny, I had nothing less than 30 women who could minister with power. They had been trained in deliverance. They can do deliverance. They can do everything. And when I saw all of them, and you know women are wonderful to manage. How do I manage all these women? Because now there was competition for microphone. They didn't put my name on the roster. Pastor didn't call me. I went to God in prayer and then I set up eight new centers in Lagos. One in Abuja. We doubled the ones overseas. And we sent all of them out in 2015. We went back to church this year. All of them had grown. Is it to preach? They have their own platform. So as leaders, create space for your people so that they will not fight you. If you have a leadership glut, they will fight you. I know a particular church that they broke away because all of them were too matured. They didn't have where to express their gifts. They broke away, wrote a petition against their pastor, wanted to push him out. When they couldn't, they broke away to start their own church. May the Lord help us. Polluted altars. And I think maybe I'll stop there. Polluted altars. An oppressive atmosphere. Brethren, this is not a stage. Okay? Tomorrow they can come here to have a wedding. But right here that we're gathered, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name. God says what? The minute you hold this microphone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this place changes from a stage to what? What are we doing on our altars? I... In this place, there are many of us who are to the left, to the right, and some to the middle. When it comes to bringing comedians to the altar, you know, we've seen a lot of that. Some of us believe it, some of us don't, some of us are in the middle. But one thing I want to bring here. The church in Smyrna were condemned for one word. Some people were blaspheming. When I checked the meaning, it means to profane. To make holy things look insignificant. Till Jesus comes, the blood of Jesus is still powerful. The Holy Ghost baptized the church. Nobody can joke about it. I refuse it. And I tell my sons who are comedians, it is not only in church. Even when you go out, you are putting yourself in harm's way. I'm telling you the truth. They are putting themselves... I know a young comedian that started early, many years ago. All his jokes were about the Catholic church. They call him MC something. All his jokes were about the Catholic church. The way they sing, he was going after a show. He died. He was not even up to 30. Please, let us help them. Some of them are already in terrible sicknesses. This is the altar of God. The name of Jesus is what my grandchildren will call if Jesus tarries. Nobody jokes with it. Nobody jokes with it. I refuse that. So, let us begin to be creative for our own sake. Desecration of our altars. These things are important, but the Lord will help us. Wrong location. In the year 1996, T.D. Jakes moved his church from Virginia to Dallas. He got an explosion. So, maybe you need to ask God. Wrong location. Wrong focus. A particular church in southern Nigeria. Doing very, very well until they started a, a school. They started the school. Very good school. All the pastors became staff in the school. The focus changed. The church went down till today. Some of you may know the church. Because they started the school. The school succeeded, but they were using the same pastors who we gathered to pray for the church. Before they shout on the children and come back, nobody has time for the church again. So, what, I'm, what is the solution? When expressions are coming out from our church, let us separate the staff. When you're starting a school, a printing press, a TV station, don't overburden your pastors. Their job is different. Neglecting to build the church as a house of prayer. 
Prayer is priority. In fact, when we started ministry, my story is different. The hall was hot because it's not a church. The people coming to us are the people who have problems. You know, I think I discussed with you, Pastor Tony, at that time. You were saying, don't, be, Busala, don't build your ministry on problems. I said, Pastor, it's the people with problems that come. They have their church. It's when their husband, they switch off the phone. They didn't hear anything. They will come to their pastor. Oh. So, what am I saying? A place of prayer. Spiritual warfare is what bats the church. Any church that is not praying, all your fizzy one day will come to an end. Why? You are dealing with the devil. And there is no gray area. Set up intercessory groups in our ministry. We have three levels of intercessors. Who do they pray for? There should be people praying for Pastor Tony as a project. Dedicated. Because the devil knows he's going to rescue many people and so would attack him. Would want to distract him. So you must set up intercessory groups and what do you do? Don't leave them. Give them prayer mandates. Give them prayer mandates so that their prayers will have direction. When there is lack of spiritual warfare in the church, there will be witchcraft. And I'm not talking about the one we joke about. I'm talking about witchcraft that uses three methodology. Slander, offense, and gossip. When they gossip about your church or say something, before people will come and check you out, nobody is listening to you. There was a time in our ministry, people used to park cars just in front of the event center. People started saying, this place is a cult. This place is a cult. That was from the pit of hell. The devil is a liar. So what did we do? We started to pray and then God gave us strategy. Go on radio. So I started a program on radio. And people began to hear, just five minutes on Inspiration FM. My name is Busala Jegede. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the godly woman. So people from afar started saying, they saw daughters of destiny. With that, we changed the wrong impression. Go on TV. We went on TV. So what we were doing inside, we were broadcasting it. And people said, oh, I was blessed. We put it on YouTube. So your church must have a way to arrest gossip. Write it down. Don't ignore some gossip. Some, you take it to the place of prayer. My time is up. But I would just like to give you some tips. Just a few tips. That can aid your growth. God told, uh, was it Moses, wherever, is, was it Moses or Abraham, wherever the soles of your feet shall tread. I mean, Joshua. Prayer walking. Learn to prayer walk. Regular Holy Communion, Acts chapter number 247. Regularly, you must have Holy Communion. Giving welfare. On that note, let's rise up on our feet. Because our time is fast spent. I want you to pray. Before I hand over the microphone, just one prayer. Just one prayer. Ask the blood of Jesus to repair every damage in your ministry. Every ministry that is damaged, ask the blood of Jesus to repair, to repair, to repair, to repair. Ask the blood of Jesus to repair. Ask the blood of Jesus. Say, Father, I come to you. Look at the work you have given me. Am I doing it like you said I should? Am I looking for the glory or I'm looking to please you? So even as we strive to grow, we've got to grow in a healthy way. If it's not healthy, it's nothing before God. Every work will be dry. A congregation of 100,000 can burn to two. We are not here to joke. Some of us have given our lives to the ministry. We are not here to joke. We are not here to joke. Some of us have left our professions for ministry. We are not here to joke. So let God correct me now. Let God correct me now. Change my ministry, oh God. Change my perspective. Change my approach. This conference, God, I'm going away. With your, with your empowerment. In the name of Jesus, pray, 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 pray. We are going to give account of the sheep. We are going to give account of the money. We are going to give account of the grace. We are going to give account of every glory. Talk to the Lord. The Lord says there are people here. You experience a certain fall in your ministry. Because of a mistake. Don't come out. There isn't time. 
just talk to the Lord. Raise your hand and I'll just speak over your life. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just raise your hand. Masatalaba. As many who experience a certain fall. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. I cannot hear your amen. I say let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. He says the years that the locusts and canker worm have eaten, I will restore. I speak to the boat of your ministry that seem to be sinking. Rebu Satalaba. Receive a revival. Receive a revival. In the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here? You have made you have made decisions that has less led, led to a loss. Today, let the Lord restore, redirect. I want you to say, Father, whenever I see you, I want to hear the word. Welcome, good and faithful. Give him praise.